The Korean War was a war between North and South Korea in which a United Nations force led by the United States of America fought for the South and China fought for the North, which was also assisted by the Soviet Union. 21 countries of the United Nations eventually contributed to the defense of South Korea. After the first two months of the conflict, South Korean forces were on the point of defeat and forced back to the southeast corner of South Korea. In September 1950, an amphibious UN counter-offensive was launched at Incheon and cut off many of the North Korean attackers. The old Korean capital city of Kaesong was the site of the armistice negotiations. Originally it was in pre-war South Korea, but now was part of North Korea. The United Nations Command, supported by the United States and North Korean People's Army, signed the armistice agreement on the 27th of July 1953 to end the fighting. The agreement created the Korean demilitarized zone to separate the North and South Korea and allowed the return of prisoners. After the armistice was signed, Kim Il-sung was the supreme leader until his death in 1994. Kim Jong-il then successfully held a dictatorship together until 2011. Kim Jong-un is the present supreme leader of North Korea. We met our tour bus early in the morning in downtown Seoul. This fellow is CK. Any English tourists taking a Korean tour will usually get this guy. He's a good laugh. We stopped off to visit Dorosan Railway Station, the most northerly station in South Korea. It is truly the most bizarre place. Ultra modern with all the high tech equipment, we were offered a ticket to Pyongyang. How could we refuse such an offer? A real journey for 50 cents. It wasn't until we realised it stated it was good for travel on that day to Pyongyang, some 205 kilometres inside North Korea. We found our way onto the platform and our train was waiting with engine running, driver and guard on board. The problem was all of the doors were locked. My wife wanted to explore a bit further, but this South Korean god stopped her going any further. It was then he clocked me with my camera. And guess what? We also stopped off at the site of the third tunnel. The North Koreans had dug this and it led underneath Seoul City and it's one of five discovered by the United Nations. There are some good propaganda sculptures here from the war. There are also bizarre sculptures for the unification of the two Koreas. Around this area there had been heavy fighting during the war and there are many guns and ordnance made by the Chinese and Russians for all to see. A good display of the size of the DMZ can also be seen. You are reminded, for good reason, not to stray from the paths. The area is a huge minefield. These large concrete flyovers are not roads, they are a lump of concrete fitted with explosives. If the North attacks, these concrete blocks would be detonated to cause an effective roadblock slowing up any advance. The main observation tower at Dora 
gives fantastic views into North Korea. But if you have a camera, you must stay behind this line. Your camera is confiscated for the rest of the tour and any pictures deleted if you are caught. We finally arrived at Panmunjom. This is controlled by the United Nations and is known as the Joint Security Area. Today it is the South Korean Army's responsibility for checking our credentials for the third time. The Army Guard saw my camera and guess what? Without a doubt, the strangest place on the tour. God standing face to face, some partially obscured by the corner of the buildings. To make a smaller target for the North Korean gods, it has been known for them to take pot shots. The only barrier to the north are these small concrete slabs. The gods stand stone-faced in an adapted Taekwondo stance with clenched fists. They wear dark glasses to prevent eyeballing the North Korean gods. It is an act of pure intimidation. The mics on the desk are permanently live and are there to record any dialogue that goes on between the North and South, as each side has full access to the building. Today the North is somewhat outnumbered. Near the entrance to the North's guard room, a lone North Korean guard watches us through his binoculars. Or is he alone? We are quickly ushered away and past the bridge of no return, which was extensively used after the war for the repatriation of prisoner of war. It is no longer used. We head off down the freeway, passing lots of military. And guess what? Having some time to reflect, I couldn't help but wonder what world lay ahead for our children. Bad.